All right, this is a Tokyo Marui VSR 10 Pro upgrade video. And the only thing telling me that it used to be a Pro is those sling mounts, because the G-Spec has different ones. I'll be installing a fluted Action Army barrel, cylinder sorbo pads, new screws because the ones I have are stripped, a better mag release button and catch, a Stalker Panther concave nub, a 428mm VSR Crazy Jet inner barrel, and because of that I'll be reinstalling the Action Army hop-up chamber as well, along with going to try out a uh, M150 power spring. I'm going to need both sets of Allen keys because, of course, the parts need metric and imperial. Non-rubber eating white lithium grease and some curved needle nose pliers to get into the cylinder. And lastly, a flathead and Phillips screwdrivers. Alright, let's get this party started. Alright, get your mind out of the gutter. First step is to get out the rifle and start to take this puppy apart. Now, first I'll show you the original mag release is slippery and it's the spring's weak, so that's one reason I'm getting rid of it. This is the old screw that used to be by the mag release. You, as you can see, it's stripped out. I tried to get new ones at a hardware store. If you're looking for them, they're M5 20 millimeter, but they're shiny and I just said, hell with it, I'm gonna buy some new screws because they were on the site, so what the hell. Plus, they're pretty beefy. I, I gotta admit, like these Maple Leaf VSR 10 screws are a lot better. You can see here the M5 or 20 millimeter are pretty close, but the silver one, the head's just a little too big and it doesn't totally seat properly flush into the rifle body. You can see the uh, maple leaf screw on the right is missing some threads, which is fine because you don't need them anyway. Now the last screw to get this body off is your trigger screw, which mine happens to be a Phillips one. And these are the three screws that hold your rifle together. Once you have those out, you should be able to remove the receiver and barrel out of the lower body. And I probably should have taken the scope off first, but Better late than never. And now if you have one of these, you gotta watch out. Uh, there, that little red thing that fell out is a screw guide for the trigger screw, so don't lose that if you have one. Now there's another little tiny screw that holds your barrel in place onto the receiver. So you're gonna have to remove that next before you can start to unscrew the barrel. Now in order to get your cylinder out, you're gonna have to pull down that little tab that I did right in front of the trigger and you hold the trigger back and you should be able to slide the cylinder right out. Now keep in mind that this is a zero trigger mod that was done before I bought it, so your trigger might be a little different, but. Now the next step is to unscrew the barrel from the receiver. You're gonna have to watch, there's a guide ring in there that's gonna fall out, just keep track of that. That's basically to make sure that your cylinder lines up with the hole in your hop-up unit when you're cocking the bolt. Now this piece here has two screws that screw into your hop-up and the barrel. They basically hold the hop-up unit in the barrel properly and the first screw I took out close to the mag release also screws into this to hold it to the body of the gun. Now this piece also plays a big part in holding in the button for the mag release along with guiding your mags up into the hop up well so your BBs can feed properly. I usually leave the screws right in it because there's no point in taking them out and they're easier to find. Now this is the original TM hop up chamber. I just thought I'd show you that before I go and take out the Action Army one because I'm going to be putting the new nub in it and the new barrel but this is what the old one looked like. So now we're going to slip out the Action Army hop up chamber with the old barrel. You'll see the uh, cylinder nozzle mark there. That's from not putting in the proper cylinder ring after I installed this uh, the first time. Now that little nut is what applies the pressure on the hop up arm. Now rotating it over that's where the BBs go through and the little hole next to it is the hole for the Allen key, 2 millimeter Allen key which you would use to adjust the hop-up, which is done through the magwell. Now those screws are for the BB stopper tension that prevents the BB from rolling backwards. There's a spring that sits in between the screw and two little rubber stoppers that protrude into the hop-up chamber. All right, now it's time to remove this barrel. You need to get your Allen keys out and start screwing these little tiny screws out of each side. There's two of them. It actually comes with three, but I only put in two of them as a recommendation because the smaller one can strip and yeah, don't want that. And that's the hole that I didn't put one in, so we're going to move on to the next hole. <laughs> These actually slide into a little sheath that you slide down the barrel. You'll see that in a second here. These ensure that your barrel stays in the proper position and doesn't slide out of the hop-up chamber at all when you're firing. Now the last thing you're going to do before taking this chamber off is make sure that you back off your hop-up arm so it's not putting pressure on your bucking. You're also going to want to keep your finger on the hop-up arm because that puppy's spring-loaded. Now when I tip it over, the two things I'm popping out here are the Omega Maple Leaf concave nub and uh, the spring. That's what the concave nub looks like. It's got a nice little curve to it. And that is the spring that goes under the hop-up arm. So now you're ready to slide out the barrel and the little sheath that goes on it. Because the bucking's made of rubber, you're going to get a little resistance when you're trying to pull it out. But just be careful and slide it out nice and smooth. Once you do that, you can remove the little plastic sheath along with the Teflon tape that gives you a little better air seal. 
Then I give the bucking a little gentle squeeze so I can ease it off the barrel there without ripping it. And the bucking I'm using is a Maple Leaf Monster VSR Bucking 70 Degree. All right, let's get at that crazy jet barrel. You see the uh, back side of her has no bar for the window, so it's opened up. And the front is designed to push out a little tunnel of air to surround your BB. So you can see the difference there. Crazy Jet's on the left. Now when you're putting this maple leaf bucking on, there is a diamond shaped rubber kind of nub on the inside that protrudes out into the bucking. You want to line that up with the window, just kind of eyeball it and you'll, you'll see what I mean. Now I'm going to uh, reapply the Teflon tape to give it a better air seal. I recommend about a quarter of it being on the bucking and the rest is on the barrel because when you put it in the hop up unit, it's going to show up in the hop up window and it could affect how your tensioner pushes down on the bucking. Just like so. That might be just a hair too much though. Now you're going to slide on that little sheath. You want the thinner side going on first. Those holes are going to line up with the screw holes in the hop up chamber. Now the next step is lining up that rubber guide on the bucking with the long slitted hole in the hop up unit. So you can't go wrong unless you really force it, which you don't want to. You just want to line it up with that groove right there. Doing so ensures that the little nub inside the bucking is going to be perfectly lined up with your hop up arm. Now also when you're sliding this in, you're going to line up that hole on the sheath just like so with the hole that you're going to put the screw through and that's what's going to keep your barrel locked in place. You're going to put these screws on either side. You don't want to go too tight, just enough where you feel a little bit of tension. You know it's gone through the hole. Both are lined up and you're good to go. Now I'm going to get out the Stalker Panther Concave Nub. One of the main things I love about this nub compared to the Omega Maple Leaf Nub is this one takes up the whole hop-up window in the Action Army hop-up chamber, whereas the Omega one doesn't. So when you try to install the Omega one, it's really hard to guess if you've got it in the right spot or not. This is them upside down. The curves are pretty much identical. To get it installed, just drop it in there. I'm going to use my little Allen key to uh, work it into the hop-up window. As you can see, I'm going to slide it right in there, and it's just a perfect fit. Now my Teflon tape comes up just a little bit there, but that shouldn't affect it. If it does, I'll be opening this back up. Now I've seen a few ways to get the spring in place. Mine worked for me. I just kind of put it in there and try to pop it down as quick as I can. If you do it right when you lift it, the spring should be balanced. You'll feel it going into the hole on the hop up arm. You just give it a little uh, push down. It's got some spring to it. Now you're going to put the little nut on there and you're going to need your Allen key to come from the other side and start to screw it in to tighten that bolt. Now if this was currently in the gun, you'd be doing this through the magwell, and that's literally how you would be tightening or loosening the hop up. You're just screwing in that bolt and it's pulling down the arm or it's pushing the arm up. Now you don't want to tighten it too much because you're essentially pushing the bucking down into the barrel and the BBs aren't going to be able to pass through it to actually shoot through the barrel. Alright, moving on. It's cylinder time. Now this is, as far as I know, the original TM cylinder. Uh, as you can see, whoever had it before me drilled out the little locking pin there. That normally would prevent you from taking off the cylinder head to upgrade the spring, piston, or spring guide. I've seen videos on how to do it, and thankfully I didn't have to. But this is where these uh, curved needle nose pliers are going to come into handy, because there's two little holes in the front of the cylinder head, and I am just going to use those to help screw it off. Once you've done that, there's only three things to take out here. The piston, the spring, and the spring guide. Now initially I was thinking, alright, I'm going to put this M150 spring in because I was trying to get to 2.3 joules of energy. Except the M150 put me up to 3 joules. Whoops. The old spring I'd taken out was pushing 1.8 joules of energy with 0.43 gram BBs, which is around 300 feet per second. So I suggest uh, greasing up the spring a little bit because it's metal on metal with the spring guide. You don't need a whole lot, just enough to, to lube it up. And because I was predicting the 150 spring would be too powerful, I have these, which are little rings that you would put on the spring guide, which actually will increase the power of my older spring. Because instead of cutting the M150, I'm going to see if I can get it up as close to 2.3 as I can. The rings are small, they just slide right on the spring guide, and basically all they're doing is causing my spring to compress more than it normally would without them. Each one is supposed to add about 5 to 10 FPS to your existing spring. Now this isn't an exact science, so I'm not going to give you too many numbers here. You're going to just have to trial and error it yourself. I'm pretty confident my old spring is a cut down M150, but who knows. So now to the cylinder head. I'm going to pull off the existing Teflon tape and begin to remove the old Sorbo pads, which are used to absorb the impact of the piston hitting the back end of the nozzle, which gives you a quieter shot. 
Now because they wear out, they give you a pack of three. The blue goes on first, then the black ring goes on last. They've already got adhesive on them, so you just peel and stick. Just make sure you line it up properly so that it'll fit back in the cylinder and not uh, catch on the sides or anything. Then you repeat the process with the smaller black ring, lining it up ever so precisely. And bam, she is completed. It's a little smaller than the other one, so I'll get a little more cylinder space in there. I'm going to strategically put a little cut in this Teflon tape so I can split it in half because the threads on the cylinder head are a little smaller. And I'm paranoid that the hole from that lock pin that was removed might be releasing some air, so this might prevent that. Once that's done, I'm going to get a little uh, white lithium grease, put it on these little guide rings that are on the piston. You don't want to put too much on there because when you're shooting, you don't want any of the grease to go out into your hop-up bucking, which is going to make your hop-up a whole lot less effective. Once you've got everything greased to your liking, it is time to put that cylinder all back together. It's real simple. Just put the spring on the spring guide, the piston on the spring. Make sure you don't pinch that O-ring at the top of the piston head. I line up the nozzle head with the piston head and compress the spring a little bit. Just far enough so that when you start twisting, you catch a little bit of the threads. And then that'll hold it in enough that you can actually get the needle nose pliers to tighten it further. Now that the cylinder is back together, it's time to move on to the outer barrel install. And since this new outer barrel is the same width from the back to the front, I'm going to slip on two of these inner barrel guides so that when you're shooting, the barrel isn't going to wiggle or move. It's going to make it a little more accurate and more consistent in its shots. I'll put one down near closer to the hop-up unit and the other one's going to go right near the end and that should stabilize it in a perfect world. Now one thing I noticed in the new barrel versus the old, new being on the left, it has 16 threads and the old had 14. I actually ran into an issue where my mags wouldn't stay seated properly, they wouldn't click in and that was because the cylinder guide ring that goes in the receiver was actually taking up too much space. So I had to go back to my old one which was a little thinner and that seemed to fix the problem. But anyways, you can see here I'm getting a little resistance when I'm trying to put the inner barrel in the outer barrel. And that's a good thing because that means that those barrel guides are actually gripping the sidewall and that means that it's going to keep that barrel nice and stable. It's also kind of a pain in the butt because I'm trying to get that pushed up far enough to line up with the screw holes, which is a little more difficult, but mission accomplished eventually. Once the screw holes lined up, you can grab that metal piece, which is going to mount to keep the hop up in position and also allow you to attach it to your VSR's body. And that's the moment I went with the thinner cylinder guide ring to fix the mag feeding issue. Now I'm not going to put the cylinder in all the way while I'm screwing in this barrel first. I'll get the barrel done and then I'll uh, work on getting the cylinder back in place. Just remember the trick is to hold in the trigger to allow the cylinder to pass over the sear and to push in that little peggy thing that uh, sits behind the spring guide. Then you're going to add that little tiny screw if you haven't lost it. <laughs> That'll prevent your outer barrel from twisting, keeping your shots straighter. And last but not least, my enlarged mag catch and release button. The first thing I noticed is that spring is hefty. A lot more heftier compared to the old one. Now I'm not going to begin to describe how to uh, get the button the right way. You'll figure it out. <laughs> it's a 50-50 shot. And this was probably the easiest install of the whole process was just putting that in there and compressing the spring against a little lip of plastic that comes out of the body there. And that is that. Now it's reassembly time. I'm going to start with the uh, trigger screw guide. You're going to line up the back end and if it goes in smooth then you've screwed in your rail far enough. If the front end by the mag is really tight to get in there, then that's where you might run into the mag issues where they won't seat properly. And if that's the case, just make sure your barrel is twisted in far enough, or you may have to shave down your cylinder guide rings a little bit. One other thing that can cause the mag catch release having issues is tightening the screw right next to the mag release button. If you tighten it too much, the mag is not going to release properly. All right, now I'm going to do a quick mag test. Clicks in perfect. Release is easy. Mission accomplished. Now I'm just going to test out and see if my silencer actually is compatible with this one. And oh yeah, we're in business. All right, I really appreciate it if you made it this far in the video. And I hope it helps some of you out in your upgrade adventures. Trust me, this was one of the funnest projects I did in a while. If you enjoyed it, share, like, subscribe. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you on the next one.